just no time to die. Hello, my fellow 007 fans. How you guys doing? This is Alan, and welcome to another James Bond movie review. And today I'm going to be reviewing the 25th James Bond movie, No Time to Die, starring Daniel Craig in his fifth and final performance as James Bond, the sixth James Bond. And before I go any further, I should probably let you guys know that this will be a spoiler review. Spoilers, spoilers, spoilers. There will be spoilers. If you have not yet seen No Time to Die and you don't want the movie spoiled for you, get the heck out of here right now, go see the movie, and come back to this video after you've seen the movie. Or if you just don't give a shit about spoilers, fine with me, listen on. Um, but there will be spoilers, 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 you have been warned. Okay, and the plot of No Time to Die, uh, according to the internet, is as follows. James Bond is enjoying a tranquil life in Jamaica after leaving active service. However, his peace is short-lived as his old CIA friend, Felix Leiter, shows up and asks for help. The mission to rescue a kidnapped scientist turns out to be far more treacherous than expected, leading Bond on the trail of a mysterious villain who's armed with a dangerous new technology. And that is basically your plot of No Time to Die. So, No Time to Die, the fifth and final movie for Daniel Craig as James Bond. This movie had been delayed and delayed and delayed. In fact, it wound up being delayed for a year and a half due to the coronavirus pandemic. It was supposed to have been released in April of 2020. Instead, it was delayed until October of 2021. It was a long, long wait for James Bond fans, but here it is at last, No Time to Die. Was it worth the wait? <sighs> Folks, I want to tell you that I loved this movie. I wanted so bad to tell you how much I loved it that Daniel Craig's final film as James Bond was fantastic. Instead, I'm here to tell you I enjoyed No Time to Die up to a point until we got to the ending where they killed James Bond and the whole movie went to hell for me. Yeah, they killed James Bond at the end of No Time to Die. They killed Daniel Craig's Bond. Yeah. This was the ending that I had been fearing all this time. This was the ending that I did not want. And what hurts me all the more as a longtime James Bond fan is that, uh, obviously, Daniel Craig and co-producers Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson and director Kerry Joji Fukunaga and co-screenwriters Neil Purvis and Robert Wade, these people do not believe for one single second that they did anything wrong killing off Daniel Craig's Bond. In fact, the bits and pieces that I've read online basically says that, uh, that the filmmakers, including Barbara Broccoli and Michael G. Wilson, the producers, felt that killing off Daniel Craig's Bond was the appropriate way for Craig's Bond to go out, that it was a fitting end for Craig's Bond to go out with, considering the story arc that Craig's Bond has been on for five films now, that killing him off was the appropriate way for his Bond to go out. No. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't at all. This isn't the way I wanted Daniel Craig's Bond to go out. You know, how dare you do this to us, the fans? You know, how dare you think that killing off James Bond is the appropriate way for Daniel Craig's Bond to go out? How dare you? How fucking dare you do that to us? How fucking dare you do that to Daniel Craig's Bond? Shame on you people. Shame on you for this bullshit ending to Daniel Craig's era as James Bond. I did enjoy No Time to Die up to a point. You know, I mean, everything leading up to the ending I thought was great. The money is clearly up on the screen. I mean, this is clearly the most expensive James Bond movie ever made. Everybody's performances, I think, is great. James Bond, great as always. Uh, tough, strong, and yet he's a bit domesticated this time out as a James Bond. But it's a terrific performance from Daniel Craig in his final performance uh, as James Bond. Going down the list of the other people in the cast, Rami Malek as Safin. Uh, maybe not the greatest villain, but he's definitely slimy, so I liked him. Leia Seydoux, the wonderful Leia Seydoux, is back as Madeline, the woman James Bond loves. 
Great to have her back in this movie. Lashana Lynch as Nomi, the new 00 agent who takes over the 007 number from Bond, considering that Bond has retired from MI6. So she is now assigned the 007 number. I liked her. She was good. Ben Wishaw is back as Q. He's great. Naomi Harris back again as Moneypenny. Nice to see her. Jeffrey Wright returns as Felix Leiter. It's nice to see him again. Unfortunately, No Time to Die kills off Felix Leiter as well. Yeah, Felix Leiter gets killed off in this movie. God damn it. <laughs> but uh, Jeffrey Wright, when he's uh, when he's on screen, you know, he's good as Felix Leiter. But yeah, we didn't have to kill off Felix. God damn it. Christoph Waltz returns as Blofeld for one scene. He's in prison. Nice to see him. Ray Fiennes, good old Ray Fiennes, is back as M. Bond's superior. You can't go wrong with Ray Fiennes. He's great in anything he does. Anna de Armas is wonderful as Paloma, a CIA agent who assists Bond in Cuba. Uh, she's gorgeous, uh, bubbly, and she kicks ass. Uh, she's definitely a highlight in the film for sure. I think I mean, everybody's been saying that about Anna de Armas, but I have to admit, she's a highlight. She's not in the film for very long, but she totally lights up the screen when she's there. So she's great. And I will also make mention of Rory Kinnear returning as Bill Tanner, M's chief of staff. Nice to see him. So all the actors in the film are great. Kerry Fukunaga's direction, uh, for the most part, is very strong. Lots of great action scenes in the film. The car chase at the beginning of the film where Bond and uh, Madeline are being assaulted, I guess, uh, in the city of uh, Matara. Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, the car chase where uh, the spe Spectre assassins are and have ambushed them and Bond and, and Madeline are in the Aston Martin DB5 and they're being fired upon. And then Bond does the donut in the Aston Martin, you know, with the machine guns blazing. Uh, that was cool. Bond, you know, also gets to ride a motorcycle up stone steps and fly really high on the motorcycle. The scene in Cuba with Bond and, and Paloma, great fun. The car chase in, in the forest, excellent. Uh, the assault on uh, Safin's lair at the end of the film, you know, with Bond and, and Nomi assaulting uh, Safin's lair. That's great. The look of the film is great. The, 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 the set design, beautiful to look at. It's a great looking Bond film. The plot is complicated. I don't completely understand the plot, but it involves nanobot technology. Nanobots that get in the blood and they can kill millions of people. It's very complicated. Uh, I don't have time to go into the full plot here, but yeah. Nanobot technology is what we're talking about here, uh, plays a role. It's an interesting plot, but it, it is complicated to describe, I have to admit. But, uh, yeah, I was enjoying the movie for most of the way, folks, and then the goddamn fucking ending, where, where Bond basically sacrifices himself, to make a long story short, he sacrifices himself in order to save Madeline and his and Madeline's daughter. That's right, James Bond, it turns out Bond is a daddy. He and Madeline had a daughter. And, and yeah, Bond sacrifices himself at the end to save Madeline and, and their daughter. And you can say that that was a very noble end for Bond, but God damn it, Bond didn't have to die. And it's all the more frustrating and infuriating for me because the movie is called No Time to Die. So I feel like the filmmakers lied to us. Calling the film No Time to Die, it's, it's like telling the audience, oh, you know, Bond's not going to die. Bond has no time to die. Bond never has time to die. Bond's not going to die. And then he dies. Fuck you, filmmakers of No Time to Die. Fuck you for that. I'm sorry. No, no Mr. Nice Guy from me about this. I'm angry about this. I really am. And like I said... The filmmakers, the producers, the director, the screenwriters, and I guess Daniel Craig himself, even though I have the utmost respect for Daniel Craig, uh, but these people don't believe for a single second that they did anything wrong killing off Craig's Bond. Yet killing off Craig's Bond was the appropriate way for his Bond to go out. But not to me. Not to me. James Bond wasn't supposed to die in any of his movies. Yeah, James Bond is supposed to die as an old man on his deathbed off screen. That's how James Bond, in my opinion, is supposed to die. Not like this. And uh, okay, so James Bond will return. You know, you know they when after the end credits scroll at the end of the movie, uh, they flash on the screen, James Bond will return. So, so what does this mean? Does this mean that they're going to have to press the reset button on the James Bond film franchise yet again and reboot the James Bond franchise yet again with, uh, with the seventh James Bond, whoever that winds up being? And when they get to the end of the seventh James Bond's era, 
several years from now. Uh, what are they going to do? Are they going to kill him off too? And then press the reset button for the eighth James Bond? And is this going to be the norm from now on? I, I mean, they've basically set up a James Bond multiverse here. They really have, where the different James Bonds all live in, in alternate universes from each other, I suppose. That's the only way you can explain uh, Daniel Craig's Bond and him being killed off. And yet, James Bond will return. Uh, okay, whatever. But I'm still pissed off that they killed off James Bond, uh, or at least Daniel Craig's version of James Bond. This was not the way I wanted Daniel Craig's Bond to go out. There was no need to kill off Bond. So I've decided from now on, folks, that uh, Spectre is Daniel Craig's last James Bond movie for me personally. Okay? And at least in Spectre, they gave Daniel Craig's Bond a much happier ending with him and Madeline driving off into the sunset. You know, that's the kind of ending that Daniel Craig's Bond deserves. Not this bullshit ending in No Time to Die. And I know a lot of Bond fans don't like Spectre. A lot of movie critics don't like Spectre. I love Spectre. It's not my favorite of the Daniel Craig Bond movies. For me, Casino Royale, number one. Skyfall, number two. But I put Spectre, number three. I, I think Spectre is a great Bond movie. And it gave Daniel Craig's Bond a much happier ending than No Time to Die. So as far as I'm concerned, folks, as far as I personally am concerned... Spectre is the final Daniel Craig Bond movie for me. I'm not going to watch No Time to Die ever again. And when No Time to Die comes out on, on DVD, Blu-ray, and, and digital download, you know, I'm not going to touch it. I don't want it. I'm only speaking for myself, folks, okay? If you like No Time to Die, that's great. If you love No Time to Die, that's great. If it's your favorite Daniel Craig Bond movie, that's great. I'm glad you liked it. But I hated the ending so much so that i'm never going to watch no time to die ever again and i will not add it to the movie collection either when it comes out on home video and for me personally specter is the final daniel craig bond movie they disappointed the shit out of me with the ending of no time to die they really did and i'm really sorry to say that but it, it's the truth so on a scale of one to four stars i'm going to give no time to die a middle of the road two out of four stars. Two out of four stars for No Time to Die. I am so fucking disappointed. This was not the way I wanted Daniel Craig to go out as James Bond. But, oh well, there's nothing we can do about it. What's done is done. So the only thing I can do about it as a fan is, uh, a, a disgruntled James Bond fan, is simply never watch No Time to Die ever again. And for me, Spectre is the final James Bond movie for Daniel Craig. My choice. <laughs> Your choice may be different, but that's my choice. Other than that, though, congratulations to Daniel Craig for a job well done. I just wish they had given you a better send-off. Oh, well. <sighs> There's always Spectre. <laughs> so that's my review of No Time to Die. This is Alan. Thank you so much for listening. See you next time.